So there's how the table stands after that game. Japan flying high on the top on three points. Colombia yet to get off the blocks. That other game between Poland and Senegal coming up at four o'clock. So 2-1 win in the end for Japan and Richard, it's a really big surprise win in a lot of ways because for Japan, well, they've only reached the knockout stages on two of their, their last five appearances, but that's their first win against South American opposition as well. It's a big win. Yeah, it was a great win for them, a very important win uh, in terms of how the group's going to pan out now. But um, when the game started, they, they started to press, then they lost away for a little bit and then whatever the manager said to them at halftime, it's really worked. They've come out, they've started to find that extra man and then got a bit, bit wasteful in, in uh, the final ball in the final chances but they came good in the end they stuck to their guns and they got a goal and in the end they defended well they got 2-1 in front and then they managed the game much better than they did when they were 1-0 in front and as Richard said it was a big test of a managerial career mm. for Nishino Michael but in his first competitive match mm. he did pretty well yeah he did do well you know it's there's you know, when they went in at half time, they would have felt slightly deflated by uh, to, to lose the goal and the nature of the goal, uh, having been, had obviously the lead and, and had the extra man. But they played much better in the second half. There was uh, much more control of the game. Basically played for you know the entire second half of the game in, in the Colombian half as well. And uh, you know they deserved to win in the end. They created enough opportunities to win the game from open play. It was a set piece where they won the game from. But uh, I don't think you can begrudge them the three points. Yeah, is it a case, Eamon, that we're more pleased with Japan? or more disappointed by Colombia? Uh, well, it's both, uh, in a way. I mean, I certainly think it was an admirable, hard-working performance uh, uh, by the Japan, and I agree with Richard and Michael that the dressing room at half-time gave the coach uh, a chance to say, look, we've got an extra man, here's how you use the extra man. You pass the ball uh, and make them chase, and sooner or later a space will open up. And they did that very well. And they also began to press again. So they wanted to win. Uh, and in the, sec the second part of the first half, they kind of eased off. So good uh, half time for them. They did what they were asked to do. And for Colombia, uh, really, um, Falcao was isolated up front for almost all of the game. On his own. And n not good quality stuff played up to him. Uh, uh, so they were convincing winners and I don't think they were ever threatened um, after they scored a second goal. And the second goal from a set piece is yet another set piece in this tournament, mm. you know, uh, and it, it wasn't defended well. So I think for Japan, they'll be extremely happy tonight and Colombia now, have a, it's a very big ask. Yeah, there's got a lot of soul searching to do. Well, Michael, let's take a look at that goal uh, and, and another set piece, as Eamon says. Yeah, it came um, from corner that was blocked actually, it was a, a great block, um, but it's Honda takes it left foot, it's Osaka that heads it. We see here, Ospina gets himself in a really poor position, gives himself no chance to save it, albeit it goes right in off the post, but he's in no man's land. But Osaka's 5 foot 11, he's jumping in there amongst four Colombian players, it's really poorly defended, you know, they'll be really disappointed how they've lost that goal against a Japanese team that wouldn't be renowned from scoring from set pieces either. So, um, you know, I'll be disappointed. They'll be disappointed actually in their setup. The goalkeeper will be disappointed in his role in that as well, I think, and it's a poor goal to lose. Can I ask <clears> you, Richard, as a defender, how does a five foot 11 man get in ahead of four defenders, as Michael says, like that, to get the head, a clean head on the ball yeah. like that? I think sometimes it's safety in numbers. You think, oh, we've got so many people here, someone else will do it. Mm. And then nobody does it, and that's the thing. And when you're down to 10 men, if you can see the goal because you've been pulled apart, you can accept it, but set pieces is a no-no and it's the one part of the game you can stop it, you work on and that's, that's the World Cup and they've, they've let themselves down in it's, that way. It's also the flight of the ball. Yeah. It wasn't ballooned up to the far post. It was good flight on that. It was so good that the keeper couldn't come for it. He couldn't get there and he got caught in no man's land. Uh, and it didn't matter, 5 foot 11 against 6 foot 6, if it's coming at the right height, uh, and you're getting the run. He was getting the run on them as well. Uh, but it, it's a bad goal to give away. You know, you should have your fence, defence organised and um, ready, but they didn't. Yeah. Uh, he, he heads it in the middle of the six-yard box as yeah. well. Really, yeah. you would expect with the flight of the ball for Colombia to have someone better defend the front of the six-yard box better than what they did. Yeah, certainly looks like it. <clears throat> Eamon, you said they were convincing winners. They had a lot of other good play as well today. They did, yeah. They, in the second half, they did really well, and they got in a couple of times. Uh, Osako 
here gets in and uh, you know he might do better but uh, it's a good save but that was a real chance you know uh, and I think we'll find uh, also the Saki on the right had a real chance as well um, and the, again this is yeah this is Osaka again good save by the goalkeeper they're not potent and they're not top top class players what they have is this is Saki what they have is energy uh, and commitment uh, and they showed that from the start and a bit of now came in second half when the coach had a chance to teach them how to use the extra man uh, again and they took Kagawa who's one of their more renowned players took him off with 20 minutes to go and the, the mystery of the match really is uh, Hamas for Colombia he did come on with about 25 minutes to go he looked fine uh, yet he didn't start the match now why if he's fit he should have started uh, if he's not fit well then do you think they were gambling Eamon and saying we can win this game without him it's possible but I Michael yeah. I'd be interested in Michael's opinion I, I, as I someone who's coaching he, yeah I think the coach he made two substitutions um, he brought Baca on and then he brought uh, James on and I think he thought they needed a lift they hadn't really got out of their half Colombia they have no threat with Falcao because he's never going to run away from you he needs <clears> support he needs people to link with him and try and get them up the pitch and I just think Peckerman made that decision you know we started he brought James on brought him on the right hand side he moved him to the left hand side and then brought uh, Baca on tried to get Baca a bit closer to Falcao but neither of them really had any impact in the game when they come on and uh, as a result of that, they possibly weakened themselves a little bit defensively because the wide players in the, had, had given them a good shift defensively to get back in as well. And they'd already taken Quadrano off then yeah. as well at that stage. Uh, Richard, you're going to take a look at some of the good play that they did have today though. Yeah, there wasn't much in the second half. They were, they were pinned back for a long period. But after they went 2-1 down, they, they sort of stepped it up a little bit. And this is Rodriguez. This is why it's a shock that he's not playing. He gets into really good positions. And Lerma with a great back heel and a good opportunity, but again a great block. I think it was by Osaka who just scored the goal. Uh, that, this is the thing, even set piece have been so high, and you've got James Rodriguez who's delivering balls in like that. And then the ball comes out wide again. I think it's Mohica, the, the left back, who crosses it. And this is the one situation where you want Falcao in, in the place, but you've got two centre halves all running into a space, and there's no room for him to get that opportunity. So it was. It was tough for Colombia because they were down to 10 men for so long and the second half the plan was we'll get out of here with a draw but with the goal coming as it did they had to try and push up and they just didn't have it in them really to create and towards the end. Well you said they played with 10 men and here's the reason why Michael you're going to look 85 minutes to give away a penalty this early on it probably did change the game. It did we learn it's such a simple goal really it's cleared here and it's just hooked on in the midfield. Sanchez has got to see this off. He doesn't, you know, he thinks he's athletic enough to deal with it. He, he, he isn't. And the one player you don't want this falling to is Kagawa, and it does, to be fair, you know, in terms of where Colombia are. It's a good side foot, it's going on, on target. And the ref's in no doubt, you know, obviously that it's a penalty, and he's in no doubt with a red card, you know. It's, it's a very harsh punishment, but at the end of the day, Sanchez has stopped the ball going in the net deliberately in the eyes of the referee with his arm and hence he is using the red card. You can see clearly his, his arm is in a very unnatural position and, and it stops a goal. Yeah. And it's a very cool penalty. He, he waits for a spina and he just side foots it just down right off centre. And uh, perfect start for Japan to be honest. It really is Eamon because in yeah. the context of the group as you said as well, a win like this for Colombia, they've never gotten out of the group when they've mm. lost their opening match so no. it's a huge setback and a big bounce for Japan. Yeah and we'll see the other two teams in the group, uh, Senegal and Poland, but it also has implications for the England-Belgium group uh, and England and Belgium will be really interested in, in that game because uh, they might have feared a, an on-song Colombia with James going and Falcao going but now um, I think England and Belgium will take great encouragement uh, from that result because whoever comes out of this group and whoever finishes second would be definitely second favourites against either but certainly against Belgium I'm not so sure about England uh, I don't know what you guys think but it's, it, it is you can be lucky I mean Michael had it at the European Championships with Northern Ireland they actually came out and they, they got Germany. You can get a good half of the draw, like in anything, any sport, tennis. If you get a, 
a break and you get a good half of the draw. And that is a break, I think, for England and Belgium, which might allow them to get to the quarter final and then they're only one game away from the semi final, which is regarded as success. All right.